around the University of Cincinnati with the football team being selected for the college football playoff. But we're here to play basketball tonight. Bryant wins the tip-off, and the Bulldogs will start with possession of the basketball. We talked about Peter Kiss at the open. He's really the motor that makes this engine run. That's exactly. It's early. You want to try to get Kiss going early. But that was a great drive there by Elijah's. And, and I like to see that from this Bryant team. Continue to be aggressive. They might not have the size, but continue to attack all game long. Oh, Elijah's couldn't convert on that drive. Here's a do. We talked about his big game at Miami. A lot of different impressive pieces on this Cincinnati team. There's Micah Adams Woods on the three. Can't convert on that one. But Kevin, he leads the nation in assist to turnovers ratio. Such a selfless player. And, and that's what you look. When you got a lot of depth, you need guys to kind of take that back seat and just distribute the ball, and Adam Woods is doing a, a major job this year at that. And there's Cincinnati creating a turnover on the defensive side right there, and that's something Wes Miller and this coaching staff and all the players on this Bearcats team really like to hang their hat on. Exactly. Defense is the winning motto. Coach Wes Miller has also played. He understands. He's been on championship teams. That's what gets you going regardless of scoring. Nice skip pass to Koval who was fouled on his way to the basket. It was a good feed there from Adu, post to post. And Hayden Koval will head to the line with a chance at two foul shots to get the Bearcats on the board. Best thing about this Cincinnati team has been the interior play. It is increased in multiple ways this year. Koval and Adu do really good on the defense end with blocking shots and rebounding. And as they're getting going and entering December, the offensive rhythm is, is becoming very lethal. And uh, Koval and Adu is starting to show a lot of offensive threats. You want to talk about elite shot blockers. Koval and Adu certainly fit that mark. Second foul shot on the way. That one rims out as well as John Newman the third tries to track it down in the corner for Cincinnati. Not able to get there. And it's Bulldogs basketball. Taking a look at the starting lineup for Bryant. Here at the start of this Sunday evening matchup, the Bulldogs. Come in with a starting five of Alita, Pride, Hurtado, Kiss, and Elijahs. Here's Kiss. We talked about him in the open. Nice underhead pass inside. Gets it to Elijahs for a basket and one. And that's what happens when you when you average in 21, all eyes are on you. That was just a great dump off by Kiss. Very smart play and a great finish by Elijahs. And that showed Kiss's ability right there, not only to score the basketball, but create for his teammates. I mean, Kiss is. Played at Rucker, Rucker transfer. And he's used to playing high division, high major basketball. You've seen guys like Cincinnati before. Expect him to continue to be aggressive. Elijah's completes the three point play. He brings a lot of experience to the table in his graduate student year. Take a look at the Bearcats starting lineup for head coach Wes Miller as David DeJulius can't convert on that shot. Newman not on the follow either. It's a due to Julius Newman, Adams Woods, and Koval. The starting five for the Bearcats as Adams Woods whistled with a foul right there to the chagrin of this crowd. That was just a great transition push. Elijah starting to break and Kiss getting fouled there. But, you know, it's the token defense that they just tried to 1-3-1-1, one, 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 try to slow down the, the, the pace of the Bearcats offense. I like what I'm seeing from Brian here earlier. Coming off a, a rough, rough loss over at a really good Houston team, as we all know. So I expect this Brian team to come out with some fury, some, some tenacity about you know hanging in here and showing the world that they can come in here and put up a fight. Kiss came in tonight, an 86% foul shooter from the line. And he'll miss both here. Mike Saunders Jr. into the game for the first time for Cincinnati. And we could talk all day about the speed he brings to the table. He does. I mean, just a great sixth man for this Bearcats team. It's, it's almost like, you know, you sub in a starter. He, he gives such a great spark on both ends of the court. It's been a pleasure to watch him. Newman has it stripped away. I think Hurtado got a piece of that one. It'll stay with Cincinnati. Still 12 seconds to shoot for the Bearcats. And this has been the Bearcats struggle all year, in my opinion, has been the zone. Figuring out how to distribute the ball within the zone. I still think they just try to slam that ball inside like that and give themselves a high percentage shot every play. Koval can't finish inside. Still a fresh 20 for Cincinnati as the Bearcats will reset. Looking for their first points of the night. Here's to Julius. 
Now Koval in the high post, puts up a little floater off the front of the rim, comes down to Newman. I mean, those are really great shots, and as they get, if the game keeps going, I don't expect Koval and Adu to continue to miss those. Looks like Kiss got a piece of that one on these shots from DeJulius. And Cincinnati remains scoreless here, two and a half minutes in. Elijah's kicks it over into the corner to Hurtado. Now right in front of that Bryant bench, it's Charles Pride. Jump pass from the baseline. Here's Kiss, has it stripped away, and Adu picks it up for Cincinnati. Here comes the Bearcats. <laughs> to Julius, had it stripped away from behind. Back and forth they go. A little bit of back taps going on from both teams here. Both teams competing early. Pride pull-up jumper, no good. Koval fighting hard for that rebound. Frantic action here in the opening minutes in Cincinnati. It has been. Both teams play with incredible pace. Bryan's to continue to try to get run outs as well and score early within the transition. Newman, bullet pass inside to Koval, posts up. Can't get that one from the posts, and he's found for a trip to the line. Koval going back to the line for a second time, trying to convert these two, but that's exactly what Cincinnati needs to do. Continue to pound the ball inside, use their strength, puts Bryant in a tough position. They might not have the depth that Cincinnati has on the interior. Try to get some early fouls on Elijah's. Might help you here open up the offense. Koval went 0 for 2 in his first trip to the line. This one's on the mark, and Cincinnati's on the board. A couple exactly. of subs coming in for both teams as Odio Guama will sub in for the first time for Cincinnati. And Odio Guama, he's been doing a great job for Cincinnati. He's been coming off in at first big, coming off the bench, and giving, it, giving his team some athleticism in the interior on both ends of the court. Two for two from Koval. Bearcats convert at the line as now subbing in is Victor Lockin. And he has provided a lot of electricity and excitement to these home crowds in the early going of his career. He, he has, and I enjoy watching him. Man. Very versatile, and I see coaches starting to let him push the ball. I think once he calms down, continue to get his rhythm, he can be just a very versatile player for this Bearcats unit. Adam Alita in. Here's Kiss for three. Good. That's that experience. I mean, that just looked good. No time. Hand in his face and still knock it down. Dagger by Kiss. Kiss the Rutgers transfer. Showing that quick trigger right there. He has the slightest opening. He can light it up. Newman. Kick out to DeJulius. He's wide open for three. Newman on the follow. Can't get the tip in. Tracked down by Lockett. He's double teamed and elite. American and also having some really big wins against Notre Dame. I, I just, I'm just happy that they can get what they deserve. That one blocked out of bounds out of the hands of Lockin. Actually, it's a foul on Bryant. That will send Lockin to the line. Worth noting for Cincinnati, Jeremiah Davenport. We're used to seeing him in the starting lineup. He is not dressed for action tonight. So he is on the Cincinnati bench. The Bearcats will be without their second lead scorer, who comes in at over 11 points per game. You know, it's better to have these moments now because you know how the season stretches very long. Continue to learn how to win without some of your main pieces. But the Cincinnati team has a ton of depth. And, you know, Jeremiah Davenport is a huge part for this team as well. But when you got multiple guys that can step up, we almost didn't even notice that he was out. And, and that's, a, that's a positive thing when you look at the Cincinnati Bearcats. And there's one thing about this Cincinnati team that you can really hang your hat on if you're the Bearcats. It's the depth. You never know who's going to step up on a particular night. We talked about Abdul Adu really having his breakout performance against Miami on Wednesday. And that's what Cincinnati will look for again on the depth side tonight without Jeremiah Davenport available for this one. Here's Peter Kiss with that shot clock ticking down. He launches a long three. That one skips in and out. Oguama pulls down the board for Cincinnati, and Saunders will push the pace. Saunders through traffic. Can't get that one, but on the follow, Lockin has his hands on the rebound, and it's out of bounds. Man, he's stick back Cincinnati Bearcats. Can't, can't seem to figure out how to get one of these putbacks, but, I mean, the energy around the rim is great, and that's something that I know they're continue to want to work on, rebounding and second-chance points. Sometimes it's not always about making that first shot, but having multiple guys at the rim, giving yourself multiple second chances. And as we see in here, I, I, that, that's good to see from the Bearcats. Cincinnati yet to make a field goal. The Bearcats 0 for 10 from the floor here in the early going. 
Just looking to find some rhythm on the offensive side. And when, you, when you're struggling to score like this, you got to continue to hang your hat on defense unless you see supersonic Saunders gets a charge there and does what he does best. Set the tone on defense and, and continue to try to find a way here on offense early. Kiss picks up his first foul. And that's your typical Mike Saunders kind of play. He does so many things well for you. Not all of them show up in the stat sheets, but his presence on the floor seems to always be felt when he's out there. Be so young, you know, it, he has a great feel and pace for the game. And defensively, I, it, it's very smart and uses the speed to his advantage. Mason Madsen in for Cincinnati. He's certainly a guy capable of lighting it up off the bench. DeJulius, pull up jumper. Skips out, and Cincinnati's shooting woes continue. The Bearcats now 0 for 11 from the floor. It is real shooting woes. And looks like we got a tech here on coach. Well, Jared Grosso getting teed up on that one. Not the usual spot where you see a technical foul as the, the play was coming on to the other side into the front court. So Cincinnati. Won't get a chance to score from the field for the first time, but David DeJulius heads to the line. And coach, you know, Brian's coach felt that it was a travel there by Mason on the, on the baseline, and he continued to let the play go. They did a great job on defense regardless, but I, I love to see a coach fight for the team, and that's all he's doing. DeJulius makes the second. We'll give the ball back to Bryant as Jared Grasso continues to Say his piece to our officiating staff. Our officials for tonight's game, Don Daly, Chuck Jones, and Courtney Green. Bryant with a 6-4 lead here, just about six minutes in. Cincinnati just having a tough time putting the ball in the basket, and that has given the Bulldogs an early advantage. And they are, but they're getting high percentage shots, getting multiple second chance opportunities. Got to continue to just figure out a way to put the ball in the hole, but when you're still struggling, continue to defend, get rebounds, and try to find something early. Knocked it with that rebound. Cincinnati with an 11 to 7 edge on the board, says Pride. Just able to deflect that one out of bounds. Oklahoma coming back out for Cincinnati as Koval heads back in. Pride has understood that the Bearcats like to try to score in transition. They're doing a really good job of getting back. And allowing their defense to set and keeping this game at a slow pace. Right in that zone, here's Lockin, loses it, tries to save it in bounds, but it goes right to Pride. Pride trades it back and forth with Kiss, now puts it on the deck down to the baseline. His jumper is off the mark. Inside on the follow, Kiss had a chance to possibly get a three-point play, but he's fouled for two best thing about Kiss, he just doesn't sit around and try to shoot. He's doing a little bit of everything. That was a great rebound there and to give his team a, another shot of some second chance points. But both teams here are struggling early to find the bucket. And this is where you try to separate yourself. Get yourself to the free throw line, get easy layups, second chance points. Continue to just defend. That ends up Bryant scoring drought of nearly three minutes. This came in tonight averaging over 21 points per game as he makes both. And I can see why. It does a little bit of everything. Can shoot the ball, scrappy enough to rebound, got good size. We saw his passing ability earlier on as well. Great, great all around, Brian. great all around player for the Bulldogs. Bryant stepping back in that zone as Madsen travels. Turnover number three from Cincinnati. And I know Coach Miller talked about a few weeks ago the start of the games. He wants to continue to find guys that are prepared and, and start well. And that's been a struggle. It's been a struggle here all season for the Bearcats to start off with some energy and tenacity. But as the games go, they continue to find a flow. It takes a couple buckets to get them going. Kiss can't get that shot out of posting up on DeJulius. Here's Saunders, stutter step. Calls that double team. You can tell Brian is almost building up a wall with two people. Every time Saunders is coming down in transition, they have multiple guys in his face. Lock in. 
Puts that one up and over Elijah's for the basket. Cincinnati has its first field goal finally on its 12th attempt. Best thing that Lockett does, great touch around the rim. Almost has like a, a bet sense of skill set when you're watching play. Inside, Pride. Behind advantage, dump off pass to Kiss cutting down the lane and he lays it in. That was a nice cut by Kiss. And like you said, great finish. Looking for the lob to lock, and he's able to save it in bounds, but goes right to Pride. Here comes the Bulldogs in transition. Pride, stutter step through traffic. Can't get that one around Lockin. Elijah's comparing the Bearcats' wins and losses. It, it generally has followed the, the play of Jeremiah Davenport. When he's had great games, it's been wins. When he's been a little bit uh, slow in the points column, that's when Cincinnati has suffered the losses. That's you, something to contend with tonight. You're 100% correct. I mean, in the, in the six wins for Cincinnati, Davenport had double figures. And I feel like, you know, when you talk about leadership, He's like that energy guy, you know. He comes in, he knocks down a big three or get a shot going, and it's like, you know, the rest of the team picks it up. So it's nice for them to adjust and get this early adjustment. Well, you, talk, you talk about energy. This guy has certainly brought the energy for Cincinnati this year. Micah Adams-Woods leads the nation in assist to turnovers ratio. I mean, he's had a fantastic year. And I've, and I've always liked Mike Adam Woods. I mean, versatile player has played probably one through three throughout his whole career, which I, I feel that he makes such great decisions with the ball. Great size, plays really good defense. I say very selfless player. So South Paul knocks down both of his foul shots. Cincinnati, six of their eight points have come from the foul strike. The Bearcats just one of 12 from the floor, neither team Lighting it up from the field. Bryant just three for ten. Defense has been the name of the game in the early going of this one. Defense has been the name of the game. But and that's the good thing. You know, when you're struggling to score, you got to continue to stay with it. It's a long game. You will, you'll eventually hit a couple shots, and it's like once you see a couple go in, the basket just open up. Pride diving on top of that rebound. It leads to a tie-up, and the possession arrow points to Cincinnati. So it will be Bearcats basketball. Pride just diving after that one. Not much he could do once he had it. That's something both coaches will like to see from their respective teams. Guys getting after it, diving on those loose balls. Token full court pressure from the Bulldogs here. Forcing Cincinnati to run a little extra clock. And that's been the best thing about this Bryant's offense. The Bulldogs continue to throw different looks at the Bearcats. Continue to not kind of knock off that rhythm. That guy's got to continue to settle in, get the ball in the, at the rim, and, and then look to have some second chance points. Adams Woods from deep gets the Bearcats' first three of the night. And we were just talking about it moments ago. He really has that ability to light a fire on this offense. There it is, and that's the tight kind of guy you expect. With Davenport being out, I look for Adam Woods to continue to be aggressive. Relsford has his shot blocked away, headed to the Cincinnati bench off of. The Bulldogs, so it'll be Cincinnati basketball. And that's what the Bearcats needed. As you see, the energy is starting to rise for this Cincinnati team. Great block there by Newman. And it's, it's good for them to have him back as well. I mean, the defensive machine had a strip earlier. He does a lot of things that you also don't see on the stat book as well. Newman was able to get the block. Adams Woods was able to save it out of bounds off of Bryant. There's Jared Hensley in for the first time. He leaves that one short. That was a great back by Elijah's there. He got up. Pogo stick. Cincinnati with its first lead of the night. 11 to 10 Bearcats in front. Childs with an open three. Too strong. Stays with Bryant. Now Brelsford misses from deep. Adams Wood saves that one from going out of bounds, but Kiss strips that one away from behind. And Kiss does a little bit of everything. I mean, you can tell uh, he's, he's seen some high major basketball. Very elite guy. This might be a shot clock issue. We're going to take a look at this one. I think the shot clock reset when it should not have. It's real crafty there about Kiss. Or rather, it only reset to 20 seconds when it should have been 30, with Kiss getting that steal on a new possession. So the shot clock goes from what was 14 seconds now to 24. A little bit of extra time for Brian here on this possession. 
Brian's here, need a goat one here. Been on the scoring drought. Trying to get something here at the rim. And turnover. That one misses the mark, out of bounds. Turnover number six for Bryant. Cincinnati's doing a great job on defense. Struggling on offense, but as you can tell, Coach Miller has these guys geared up. They understand what their principles are. Regardless if we score or not, we continue to fight on the defensive end, keep ourselves in this game. The Bulldogs just won for their last 10 shots and on a scoring drought of nearly three minutes. And a rare turnover by Micah Adams-Woods on a travel there. Again, he leads the nation in assist to turnovers ratio. You don't see those happen often at all. You do not. And me looking across here, at Coach Miller, he looked at a do and said, you got, you got to lift that screen up a little more. That way, Micah Adam Woods can continue to just go right downhill and excuse the travel there. Hurtado, nice skip inside to Elijah, who slams it home. Nice hammer dunk by Elijah. And he's been playing very strong. And, and I don't think he had, has had a break. He's seen four different bigs in the last 12 minutes and has continued to play with a very high motor. Five points for Elijah here in the first half. Adu turning, firing, and scoring. We saw a lot of that against Miami on Wednesday. We did, and it's good to see him continue to come alive on the offensive on the offensive end. As we all know, he's a defensive machine, can block shots. But his offense started off the season very slow, and after Miami here, he seemed to be right in rhythm. Double double for Adu in Oxford. Also had a lot of dunks in that one as he was dominant inside for the Bearcats. Kiss from well behind the three-point arc. Can't find that one. Rebound knocked into the corner and scooped up by Hurtado. Has to lob it in the air, still loose, and finally comes away to Bryant. Wild exchange right there. Elijah's hook shot, and he's fouled. This Bryant team is playing hard. Like I say, coming off a very, very tough loss against a really good Houston team. And as you see, I mean, they, they were playing with a chip on their shoulder. They understand that this is the Cincinnati Bearcats. It's the third time they're playing an American Conference team. They understand the physicality that they come with. As you can see, they're trying to match every bit of that today. All Elijah shooting two. Had that dunk just a few moments ago, and he adds one at the foul line here. Elijah is playing very well. Like I said, it has a very high motor. 12 minutes, no break. Cincinnati continues to throw multiple different big guys at him. And he's continued to hold his own on both ends. Elijah gives the Bulldogs a 14 to 13 lead. Important veteran presence for the Bulldogs. More full court pressure. Again, just forcing Cincinnati to run some extra clock, but that allows John Newman the third to get through traffic and he slams it home. Slam it home, Newman. Show us some of that athleticism there, young fella. Coming right back the other way, though. Brian answers with a three of its own. Zelino with a nice that and uh, I, I think that's going to get a lot of us uh, here yeah. over the next year. As Jared Hensley edged to the line for Cincinnati, first shot is good. Cincinnati has continued to just continue to battle. And, and Brian's doing a really good job in his zone. He continued to throw off Cincinnati's offensive rhythm. Cincinnati has to continue to try to get some stops and try to score in transition here. To, to find the offensive rhythm. Brian hanging on to that one point lead. Impressive showing on the road here early on for the Bulldogs, particularly after a tough loss at Houston on Friday evening. Quick turnaround, and sometimes that's exactly what you need. Kick into the corner, Hurtado, skipping it back out up high. It's a loose on the deck. Now inside, whistle and a foul. With one second on the shot clock, that'll go against Cincinnati. And you're 100% correct there. I mean, when you, when, you, when you take one of those losses sometimes, like I said, it's not always about the scoreboard. I'm sure Brian understood going in, playing a really competitive Houston team. But what you take from that is the things that you can improve on. And as you see, I'm sure they went back to the drawing board and told themselves, hey, man, we got to be tougher. We got to play harder. It's coming to light today. Turnaround shot from Kiss just misses. He's able to create a shot from just about anywhere on the floor, though. As DeJulius gets fouled up high for Cincinnati. Bearcats in the bonus, and that'll send him to the line. That's Elijah's second. That's a tough second there. He's played extremely well. He's holding the post very well for this Bryant team early. 
has to continue to watch his fouls. Foul trouble certainly can always be an issue when you find it early on. Elijah's going to have to take a seat on the bench. One and one here for David to Julius with the Bearcats in the bonus. First one is good. That's just another aspect of David DeJulius' game that he has really upgraded this year. Came in shooting over 85% from the foul line. He has. I mean, he's improved overall. I mean, one of the most consistent guys on his Bearcats team. Coming off a great game at Miami as well. Had 12, 4, and 4. He does a little bit of everything like I said. I, I see Newman having a few breakout games this year offensively, but... You know, when, you, when you're good enough to, to still be on the court and not have to worry about offense, he'll always play. That one off the mark. It's going to go out of bounds off of Bryant. The Bulldogs asking for a tip pass, and actually they're going to get it as it was last touched by Cincinnati after our officials talk it over. So it remains Bulldogs basketball with 20 seconds to shoot. Tato to inbound from the corner. Kind of a tough spot to be in. That finds its way to Childs. Childs from the top of the key. Brian team does a really good job of moving the ball back and forth, getting reversals, and very patient. In big time shot, big time dagger there by Childs. Childs with his second triple of the night. Here's Saunders quickly coming back down to answer. And that is a prototypical Mike Saunders Jr. play. Just answer right back before that defense can get set. The Super Sonic. And that's what he does best. I mean, get downhill, full speed, and execute. And there's the hustle from Saunders as he dives on top of it, passes away to Julius, who runs the floor and lays it in. Two quick buckets created by Mike Saunders Jr. Defense to offense, this Bryant's team doesn't have the depth. Doesn't always get the subs that Cincinnati does. And Cincinnati here heating up the pressure in the half court. On ball, everything is becoming a little tougher for Brian. A couple steals and some layups by the Bearcats. Cincinnati retakes the lead, 22 to 20. Kiss has it poked away by Lockett. Mike Saunders Jr., though, electrifying this crowd. Just does so much for Cincinnati going through the gears, through traffic before that Bryant defense can get set, and then diving on top of that one on the floor and passing it ahead to DeJulius, who finishes it off. Doing exactly what you need to do when you can't find that rim. Pin on your defense, get some outlets, some easy buckets. Child said that one bounced around a few times off the mark, but on the follow, Greg Calixt is there for the bucket. Calixt, that's very active on the boards there. Show some athleticism, great finish. DeJulius rattles that one in. He has his first three of the night, and Cincinnati answers back. Suddenly, these offenses are fighting their rhythm. They are, and that's all it takes. It takes a couple buckets. The rim gets a little larger. Guys are finding their rhythm as we're getting late in this first half here. Foul away from the play right in front of the Cincinnati bench as Wes Miller will go with some wholesale substitutions here. Adu, Koval. Adams, Woods, and Madsen all coming back in for Cincinnati. So four fresh players on the floor for the Bearcats. Lob inside, reverse layup off the mark from Calixt. Here comes Cincinnati, Adams, Woods, taking it all the way to the bucket for the way. A little bit in this first half. As we said, don't have the depth that the Bearcats have, so expect the Bearcats to play a little bit more pressure defense full court. All right, looking for an answer. Bearcats have made eight of their last nine shots from the floor. Hurtado guarded by Adams Woods. Trades it back and forth with Childs. Now over to the corner. Pride with that shot clock ticking down. Has to launch a desperation heave. Just barely drew iron, but on the long rebound, tracking that one down is Alita. This Bryant team is playing extremely hard. Childs throwing that foul. He had a hard take through traffic there. And he'll earn himself two shots at the line. Childs starting to come, come, come together here late in this first half. I mean, almost averaging 12 points. So used to scoring for this Bryant's team. Just knocked down a couple big threes and getting himself to the free throw line. Childs has knocked down a couple of big threes in this half for the Bulldogs. Brian has spent a good bit of this first half in front. 
really have. Yeah, they're doing a really good job on offense. Defensively, they continue to switch it up. Sometimes you see some man, some two three, some one three one one, and that's to continue to slow down this Bearcats offense that can throw a, a lot of different pieces at you. Hensley and Saunders coming back in for Cincinnati. And Kiss comes back in for Bryant. One more for Childs. He rattles that one in. Bryant seven for nine from the foul stripe tonight. That makes it a one possession game at 27-24. Saunders, no look pass, nice combo pass from Hensley to Koval, and it blocked away. Stays with Cincinnati. Madsen, pullback jumper is good. That's nice. That's nice by Madsen, not settling for the contested three, but taking what the defense gave him and a nice pull-up jumper. Mason Madsen has had his moments. As here's another moment from Mike Saunders Jr. as he's able to steal that one away and keep it away from Kiss. But now Kiss is left off. Mike Saunders Jr. shooting a double bonus for Cincinnati. Or rather, just a single bonus. That one off the mark. So Brian Cincinnati team. not able to convert. Yep, and his Bryant's team has done a very good job of, on offense controlling and taking good shots, but haven't been able to find the rim. Like we said earlier, do with a great block and doing what he does absolutely the best. Uh, uh, Abdul Adu, one of the best shot blockers in college basketball. We've noted his career at Mississippi State, second in that program's history in block shots. Of course, number one, Jarvis Bernardo, the number one shot blocker all time in NCAA Division I. And there's another instance of Adu getting his hand on the basketball. Just five seconds to shoot here for Bryant. And the dude has a great feel and a sense of where the ball is. Blocking shots is not just about height and athleticism, but you gotta have some time in and be reading it, the offense, and he does it very well. Childs, without much time, switches Ooh. hands and gets it to go with his left. Like you said, mid-air, switch from the right to the left. And Childs, nice finish. Child's the first player in this one into double figures. He has 10. Tell you one thing, Child's not playing like a child. But Matt, he's playing like a man tonight. It's been a man's game from him and a man's game from David DeJulius, who we just highlighted moments ago as well. He gets that teardrop shot through traffic. He's into double figures with 10. And it, the perfect guy to expect to step up for the Bearcats team as Davenport is out today due to injury. Dav, uh, DeJulius is doing a great job. How about Mike Saunders Jr. right there? He's not the tallest guy on the floor, but he went up to get that one to deflect it, leading to the turnover. And there you see Jeremiah Davenport on the bench for Cincinnati, not dressed for action tonight. But uh, he has been very active on that Bearcats bench cheering on his teammates. He has here. Look at Look that at from <laughs> Mike Saunders Jr. I mean, I mean he, he looked like a guy who was six foot seven there. He is, man. I mean, very aggressive, has that grit about himself. And he's a fan favorite here in Cincinnati. You know, pay, plays like that, no uh, question why is that one off the mark from a do. We'll have one more. It's the hair that gives him the superpowers, Matt. <laughs> Hope he never loses it. <laughs> Tell you, when he's just coming up through the gears, uh, hitting uh, downhill through traffic, and that hair's flying everywhere, it, it makes him look like he's going twice as fast. It does, it does. 20 miles per hour down, down a hill to get a layup. There's a nice job by Lockin, tipping that one away, keeping it with Cincinnati. Step back three from DeJulius, in and out. Surprised he missed that one. That's his groove there. He loves that pump fake step back. Great shot by DeJulius, though. Kiss with that rhythm shot. Can't get it. Nice rebound from DeJulius. Pushes it ahead. Pass to Lockin from Newman and had it stripped away. Now, I'm not sure if he got all ball there, but some, some plays aren't called. And, Lockin's looking at the ref like, you got to call the ref, but that's Cincinnati at its best, man. Get a stop, get a steal, push and transition. They do it very well in transition. They pass the ball extremely well to each other. Just couldn't convert there. Oklahoma back in for Cincinnati as he'll swap in for a do. Newman double teamed along that sideline right in front of the Bryant bench. Still double teamed. And that'll be a turnover, giving it back to the Bulldogs. 
I don't know if Coach Miller could have called a timeout there, but he's letting his team continue to figure out these things. You know, in a, in a tight game where you're in situations like that, you've got to have multiple guys sprint to the ball, getting open. And that's exactly what he's telling these other guys. Go get in the fight. Don't go watch Newman continue to get trapped and depend on a timeout. Crowd not liking that one here at Fifth Third Arena. It has been an excited crowd of Bearcats faithful here. Their football team selected for the college football playoff here earlier this afternoon. After winning the American Athletic Conference Championship last night. Basketball looking to continue that momentum as Childs' shot is off the mark. Long rebound comes out to Pride and he will return to play. Bryant hanging around. Bulldogs only trailing by five. Hurtado guarded by Lockett up high. That one's stripped away by Oguama. Lockett diving on the floor to get it. Here's a pull-up jumper from the Julius. Good. That's just nice. That's just smart veteran basketball. Say, why, why, don't take it all the way to the rim when I can just take this nice open 13-foot and nail it. A dozen first half points for David DeJulius. Matching his season average, leading this team in scoring. Inside, Kiss, turnaround jumper, good, off balance. That's just nice, nice fade in the right corner by Kiss. I mean, he shot that with a little Kiss. Nice touch. Kiss intercepting that pass. He just does so many things for you if you're Bryant. Saw some good passing from him leading the baskets earlier on. Just a great all-around player. Final minute here of half number one at Fifth Third Arena. Back to a five-point game. Hurtado doubled inside as we hit the final 10 seconds of the shot clock. The Bryant team just doesn't settle for anything. They do a really great job of maneuvering the basketball, passing up certain shots to get a better one. It's such a great tap in there. Collects with the tap in. That makes it a one possession game. Shot clock turned off. Cincinnati can hold for the final possession of the first half here. I mean, Kalix has done a great job coming in, subbing for Elijah's. I mean, there's been no letdown in the interior. To Julius looking at head coach Wes Miller for a play. Five seconds to go. Punches the gas through. Traffic teardrop shot. Good. 14 with possession. As Hurtado brings Elijah's back to center court as he had to. Got to hold himself there to make sure he didn't go for a backcourt violation. That's not the way you want to start half number two. And it looks so funny because they got the big Cobal or Cobal guarding the point guard for Bryant. Now, you know, it's funny. I continue to see this even with Victor Locken in the game. Cracks me up over here. Childs draws a foul on Micah Adams Woods right there. That'll be the first foul on Cincinnati in the second half, and it's foul number three on Adams Woods. That could be an issue for Cincinnati, as he'll have to take a seat on the bench. It is. I mean, that just takes another great player, like you said, lead the, lead the nation, assist the turnover ratio. You always want that kind of guy on the court for decision-making and allow DeJulius to be more of a scoring threat here. Adams Woods will take a seat on the bench. Saunders back in for Cincinnati. Here's Kiss, leads this team in scoring. Good on that three-pointer. He does have nine points in this game, but just three of 11 shooting. Here, Kiss, the Rutgers transfer, averaging over 21 points per game coming in. He is, and those kind of players, as we as we know and as we see, my, it only takes a couple shots. Next thing you know, that nine will go to 21 very quick. Pull up jumper from the Julius. That was halfway down and pops out. Just joining us, Cincinnati without Jeremiah Davenport tonight. He is on the Bearcats bench, but not dressed for action. As Childs leaves that one short for an air ball, and the crowd will let him hear about it. Most short, certainly will here. But Childs being aggressive, I, you know, it, it's good to see. He was a big part of Bryant's lead in the first half. Let's continue to just stick with it. Saunders coming up through the gears, going to make that shot. Bryant basketball. We mentioned Davenport on the bench for Cincinnati, not dressing for tonight's game. He has been very active cheering on his teammates. Has, and, and that's what you look for as a leader at Davenport. Be a coach from the sideline, continue to cheer on for your team. Tell guys what they need to do to improve, and it's good to see. Tyler running the point for the Bulldogs, gets it to Kiss. Just to back it out. Childs, 
Hurtado now for three. The back rim, Kobal, right there for the rebound that come, came out all the way to the perimeter. Both teams back off to that slow offensive start here. It's looking like this is going to be a, a pure defensive game, and we'll see who can catch a rhythm here late in the second half. High post, Adu, backing it down at that big game against Miami, but as it stripped away here, as Elijah was able to knock it free. Elijah is doing a really good job of holding his own on both ends of the court. Brian doesn't have the depth on the inside, but they got the toughness. Brian with the triple as he's on the board with his first points of the night. And Bryant right back in this one, making it a two-point game. Inside, Saunders can't get that one. Back to Elijah's again as Bryant pushes the pace. Great, great defensive play there by Childs and great block by Elijah's. And this Bryant team here is hanging tough. Ooh, nice move. Just can't get the turnaround. I say earlier, those losses that you take against Houston here, which was the last loss for this Bryant's team, they have adjusted a ton. And that comes from the great coaching. Saunders running the point for Cincinnati as the Bearcats look for an answer. Bryant opening up this second half on a 5-0 run to tie the game. And a lot of it is the Bearcats can't seem to find that offensive rhythm. A full court press and they go back into a zone and Elijah's doing a very good job of playing interior defense tonight. They can't get that one from the post. Bryant with a chance to retake the lead here. He had the lead for a good bit of the first half. Cincinnati went on a late run. But the Bulldogs not letting him get away. Can't convert on that one, though, from Elijah's. That was a really good play there by Brian. They just couldn't convert there. I mean, very disciplined team. Know how to execute their plays well. Defense assignments, very prepared. Saunders pull up three, and he drains it in. And that's what the Bearcats needed to do. That was a nice dagger there by Supersonic Saunders. That'll get the crowd going here at Fifth Third Arena. Bearcats retake the lead by three. Saunders with five. And on the rebound, Kiss whistled with a foul, and that is number three for him. That's a big one there. It was a tough play by Julius to make Kiss pick up that third one. Now he has to play a little shyer than he wants to because he's a very physical guy. Hands straight up. Great defense to Julius. Julius forcing that foul from Kiss. Bearcats by three. As Bryant continues to apply that full court pressure. Saunders able to navigate through it. David Julius leads all scorers with 14. Saunders inside to Oguama. Posts up and lays it in. And that's exactly what the Bearcats need to do. Continue to settle down. Great pass to Oguama. And a nice, easy hook shot. Cats by five, as they've answered Bryant's 5-0 run with one of their own. Hurtado got the defense up on the pump fake. Off the court as well, and even the players, they really embrace him. I think that's had a lot to do with the early success that he's experienced here as a Bearcat. You know, you saw it right there. The first Cincinnati coach ever to start his tenure 5-0. You think of all the, the great teams, the great coaches that have come through here through the years. Wes Miller is the only one to ever start 5-0. I mean, that's just a great start to your career as a young coach. I know for a fact it's only going to get better. Three-pointer off the mark from Newman. Number of guys going after that rebound as it comes away. The foul on Cincinnati. Boy, all hands on tech on that one going after the rebound. It is, and that, that's what it's about. You know, both of these teams are playing extremely hard. It's, Good to see this. I mean, early December, everybody getting geared up. Conference players are starting to stem around the corner, starting to focus on all those little things. That was on Newman, who was crashing in after his missed shot. He covered a lot of distance to get a hand on that one. Those are the fouls that coach can always live with. Brian on a scoring drought of more than two minutes here. Cincinnati on a 5-0 run after seeing their lead evaporate before that. Runner no good from Pride. Nice rebound from Lockett inside. Adams Woods playing with three fouls for Cincinnati. Lobs into the corner as Newman is able to track it down. Puts up a teardrop shot from the baseline. No good. Pride with the rebound, pushes it ahead. Here's Childs. Nice move through Trapnik. Gets the layup to go as he got around a couple of guys to get that one. That's a really nice move. Silky smooth, Childs. Childs eclipsing his season average. 
He's done under 12 points. He hasn't even does it tonight. He's playing to put, put on a really good performance here. First half was a big reason that Bryant maintained themselves in his game, and now he's the reason in the second half as well. Edson rattles in that pull-up two-point jumper. We know he's a great three-point shooter, but he's really shown how much he can get it done inside this year in his sophomore season. He has, and it's good that he's added that mid-range shot to his game. I know last year it kind of settled a lot. As we all know, Scott McCord is a shooter, so happy to see him add that to his game. Childs whistled an offensive foul there. Great defense from John Newman III getting set in front of him. As we spoke about him earlier, those things don't show up in the stat book, as we all know, but I mean, that is a very crucial play. This could start the Cincinnati Bearcats run here. The Julius back in for the Bearcats as Newman will take a well-deserved breather on the bench. For drawing that offensive foul. Bearcats lead by five. Their largest lead has only been seven. Bryant's largest lead has only been four. It's been a tight one since this one tipped off. Julius leads all scorers with 14 points. Gets it right in front of Wes Miller. Pump fake. Backs it out. For Hensley inside, right in the middle of that zone. Puts it up with the left hand. Going off the mark as Hurtado is able to grab the rebound. Cincinnati's getting great shots. I mean, they're doing what they're supposed to do on its own. Continue to be patient, not steps, not settling. And Hensley got to the rim. You got to live with those. Bryant hanging around. Showing that they can be a dangerous team here on the road. Cincinnati's starting to pick up the pressure on the ball with the dribble handoff, which is, which is throwing it. Bryant robbing it inside to Calixt. He's able to pull it down and draw the foul. Like I said, Cincinnati started to give uh, some pressure here on defense and it was throwing Brian off, but I mean, this is a really mature offense. Instead of turning the ball over here, you got Pride stop, nice lob over to the big guy, Kalix, and he's able to get himself out and get to the free throw line. Hensley coming over to deliver the foul there. Rosso. Has a word with Childs from the bench, giving him instruction on what's coming up next. Kalix shooting two, first one is off the mark. This doesn't look like a Bryant team that just took a hard loss to a, a really good Houston team. I mean, they're very focused, very poised on offense. Cincinnati's doing very good on defense. However, Bryant has continued to just take the pressure, accept, take what the defense is giving them, and get the best shot every time. Felix misses both ends of that trip to the line. Bryant seven for 12 from the foul strike. Cincinnati with that five point lead. That's the lead they had at halftime. Adams Woods directing traffic, brings Hensley high. Now to Julius, punches the gas teardrop runner. Rattles off the rim and on the rebound, Okwama. Draws the whistle for a foul on Bryant. Very surprised that Julius missed that. Like we said, he was two for two for teardrops there, and that's his kind of go-to shot. Like I say, getting high percentage shots every time as the, the clock continues to tick, quarter continues to get late, or half continues to get late. Those are the shots that you want to take, and they'll pop. Victor Lockett back in for Cincinnati as he guards Hurtado, senior out of Venezuela. Six foot six guard for the Bulldogs. And something about Lockett, he can really guard multiple positions on the floor. Here's Childs for another three. Just a little too strong on that one. And, and like you said, Lockett can guard multiple positions, which makes this Burkhouse defense pretty elite. When you can switch every position like that and not have to worry about helping so much. It makes everybody's job a lot easier. Right, still working that zone. The Julius able to get to the middle of the zone. That teardrop off the mark. The shots just not falling for Cincinnati in this second half. Just three for 12 from the floor on the Bearcats. But that's shooting, but great to see him continue to be active on the Bearcats bench. People don't understand how important that is to get that from your leader. That's why this team has a really good chance of being good. His teammates know he has their back. Cincinnati can't convert on that shot. They're in a battle here tonight against Bryant. It's a five-point game here as we hit the final 11 minutes of this one. Newman able to strip that one away from Brelsford into the backcourt. 
The big possession here for Brian to try to get some points on the board here. Three-pointer and air ball from Brian. Second air ball we've seen tonight from Brian. That was on the line off of Lockin. He was able to make contact with that one before it went out. It will stay with Brian, but only eight seconds to shoot. Now they're going to reset this one. Evidently, Lockin may have gained possession. Well, they might have said it, it drew a rim because it's only the 20 seconds. Nevertheless, it will be Brian basketball. No, Brian's happy to have some extra time on the clock. Try to get him a good one here, but Cincinnati's defense here being very active on the ball. Like a hand runs forward to a Wama two and jam. And it's amazing to see your four guy running the floor so hard to get that outlet. It's a beautiful pitcher there. Great defense to offense for the Cincinnati Bearcats. What a steal by Micah Adams-Woods to set that one up. Cincinnati has matched its largest lead of the night. Newman tried to draw another charge there, but just couldn't get to that spot in time. This right here, this is another very important possession here for Brian. You don't want to let this thing get too out of control or too out of reach as this time ticks down here in the second half. Got to continue to get a great shot, try to get it to Childs or Kiston. Knock in a big one for you. Inside, Grossberg can't get that one. Might have been blocked. Here's Saunders speeding up through the gears, and he's fouled. Doing what he does best. Downhill pursuit, right out transition. Drawing a foul here. He gets up to speed. There is no stopping him. They'll have two shots coming. That foul comes on Childs. That'll be his third. So Childs and Kiss both have three each for the Bulldogs with over 10 minutes remaining. Maybe the two most important pieces of this offense, really two of the three along with Elijah's. I agree here. Coach is trying to give him a rest here as we get later in the second half. He probably doesn't plan on pulling him too much here. This game is getting tighter and tighter. Saunders, one more coming as the Bearcats have their largest lead of the night. Saunders adds on to it, extending it to nine. Brian has to continue to figure it out. Got to get a big shot here, and it doesn't have to be a three. They just kind of continue to find that offensive rhythm that they've been playing with all game. The Bearcats are doing a good job of heating up the pressure and taking them out their offense. That three rattles in and out. Brian has that rebound. Childs launches again. So a tip by Saunders to lock in. It's a four and a half minute scoring draft for the Bulldogs, and here's Newman! Every time it looked like Cincinnati was ready to pull away, the Bulldogs had a counter. Do they have one here? Yeah, but what we're seeing here is depth. You know, the Bulldogs don't have a, the same amount of depth as Cincinnati. Cincinnati keeps the guys coming. They added the pressure on ball pressure, kind of denying a lot of the passes. It's taking, uh, taking Brian out of the offensive rhythm. Elijah switches hands, but can't make the shot. The scoring ground continues now over five minutes for Bryant. Got to look for a stop here. Bearcats continue to be in offensive rhythm here. I think they should give it to Lockin like they did. No good from the high post, but Lockin is there for the tip in on the follow. And that's something he does so well. You never see him quit on a shot. And that's true. And even in the zone, the hardest thing about zone is rebounding. Yeah, and they have multiple guys at the rim that, that time. Newman trying to get a second bucket, and Victor Lockett follows it up. Cincinnati on a 15-2 run. And Kiss finally able to end that run as Bryant needed it badly. That ends a scoring drought of over five minutes. Still a double-digit game. Bearcats in front by 11. Saunders left open for three, and he buries it. Bearcats starting to find that rhythm. They're starting to understand where the sweet spot is in the zone. Saunders for another dagger on the night. Saunders in the double figures with 10 points on that made three. Bryant down to the baseline, takes it in strong on Lockett and draws the foul. Great take by, by Pride there, and he drew that contact to get that foul call. Cincinnati starting to find the holes in the zone, as you said, Kevin. And they are. And not only are they finding the hole, shooters are ready to shoot. Saunders' hands was locked and loaded, ready to pull a gun. And 
He knocked it down. That was a big shot here for him to go up 14. Cincinnati two for three from behind the three-point arc this half. Two shots coming here for Charles Pride. One is good. Pride with six points. Julius coming back in for Cincinnati. As Wes Miller again. He's not shy about subbing in a lot of guys at once. Three new subs in here for Cincinnati. That's that depth that the Bearcats have. It's a nice luxury. Yeah, he's not shy at all. When you got guys that's bought into the system, enjoy playing with each other, you can sub like that. Each, each crew understands, you know, it's not about myself. We're going to get the best shot, do what we do best. And that's what we see here from the Bearcats. And it's really incredible. We continue to talk about the depth of this team. When Wes Miller came here to Cincinnati, at that point, Wall able to get the basket there. When Wes Miller came to Cincinnati, the Bearcats were down to about four or five scholarship players. He was able to talk some guys like Mike Saunders and Mason Madsen back onto the team, able to get them to stick around. But depth but certainly did not appear to be a strength of the Bearcats at the time. But Wes Miller has found it in a hurry. It has, and I think when he put his whole roster together, he had a hidden plan in mind. I think he knew these guys would enjoy playing with each other. And a mix of a little bit of coming from UNCG and some other guys coming in along with the guys that were here. It meshes very well. Saunders putting his foot on the gas in transition there. He adds two more for a dozen points. Cincinnati by 16, the Bearcats' largest lead of the evening. What we start to see is a way back from Brian. Constant new guys, fresh legs on dead legs, and as you see, it starts to wear down on you. The offense is getting on poise. They were able to finish there, and Elijah's back. What a nice finish, finish by Elijah's right there. As he adds two more at that big first half. Elijah's now with nine points. Here's to Julius County. That's what he got pass. I gotta say, you know, it's funny because you think the standstill three should be easier for a person, but he's a rhythm shooter. He loves the crossover, the step back. And he knocks those in at a high frequency. That's what he got the 16. Childs with a nice take from Trevor. And Brian continue to fight here. They just won't give up. Now, I said dead legs and might not have a depth, but they have the toughness, and they've put that on display all night tonight. This has been a pesky Bryant team. And a good bit of the first half in front. Here's to Julius. Needs all scores. He'll launch another three. Oh, off the left side of the rim in Oklahoma. I mean, that is just a fun game. I'm not joking. The atmosphere in both parties, whether it's at Centos or here, the Fifth Third Arena has been uh, a great rivalry. And it's something I think the city even enjoys as well. It's a game that really is even bigger than, than both schools. Yes. Yes. And I could say, as somebody who, who grew up here in Cincinnati and watched it every single year on TV, I finally got to attend it in person first time about five years ago. And you know, you, you build it up in your head and say, I hope it lives up to the hype. It lived up to the hype and then some. It is one of the most electric environments in sports. And it is going to be something both on the men's side and the women's side coming up a week from now. Agreed. And Cincinnati here starting to find a rhythm here offensively, as you can see. But you know something that they continue to want to improve, I'm sure, is closing out games the correct way. And not allowing teams like Bryant tonight to come back and make this a three-point game or you know, make this very exciting, but to close it out, get guys, other guys some plan minutes and sit down and get rested for the next upcoming game. You know, we mentioned on the men's side that's coming up on Saturday night, the women's edition of the Crosstown Shootout on Sunday. It'll be at 2 p.m. and we've got it for you right here on ESPN+. Plus. They're expecting a big crowd for that one. They want everybody to come out here to Fifth Third Arena. Cincinnati fans, Xavier fans, they're trying to set an attendance record, but we'll have the broadcast here on ESPN Plus as well. It's going to be a great weekend of rivalry action, and uh, we're glad to do our part to bring it to you. I mean, back-to-back -back rivals don't get any better than that in the Queen City. That's fun. Bryant hanging in there, 14-point game. They're not out of this one yet. We went up and got that. Elixed. Able to grab that one out of the air and draw a foul. It's on Lockett. Wes Miller wanting his team to finish strong here. 
Well, I'd say this game is not out of reach. You know, we always think these games out of reach, but five minutes to go, I mean, it's a ton of time to knock in a few threes, get a couple stops. Just thing you know, you'd be down seven or eight, right back in this. And that's what the Bearcats got to continue to focus on as a team. Just close games out, put people away, and that's what makes you better. Well, if Bryant is going to come back, that's not part of the plan. Tough to miss the front end of a one and one. That one nearly got away from Adams Woods. To Julius, though, able to track it down. Jump pass right back to Adams Woods, and he knocks down the triple. Yeah, near and good rhythm. That was just a great find by Julius and knockdown shot by Adam Woods. Adams Woods, the third Bearcat at double figures, coming back the other way. Childs able to maneuver his way through traffic to draw a foul and head to the line. Brian doing a great job of picking up fouls here. Stop the clock, give yourself a chance to put up some points on the board. But you got to knock in those front ends of the one and ones but here we got two shots. You're trying to make a comeback. The best time to score is when that clock is stopped. 100%. It's a 17 point deficit faced by the Bulldogs. Childs shooting two, leaves that first one short. Brian from the foul line today, 11 for 17 at 65%. They need those. They can come back. You got to knock these free throws in and take the points while that clock is stopped, like you said, Matt. Child says that one rim in and out, so that's three in a row missed by Bryant at the line. To Julius, quick first move out of the basket and out to Newman. That three pointer in and out, rebound off of Oguama, and it comes to Childs who tracks it down. Cincinnati won't take the foot off the gas either. I mean, right in transition as if they were down 15 points. Bryant able to get that loose ball off the strip from Lockett, and he is fouled. We'll see if the Bulldogs can start to knock him down from the line. Again, that's a, a big part of their ability to come back in this one. They left about three or four points here in the last few possessions just on free throws. Doing a great job of getting himself to the line. I mean, did a great job all day today. I say the Bearcats' depth, as you see, is starting to come along in this game. Transition-wise, they can pressure with multiple guys. They can push the ball with multiple guys. As the game extends, they can be tough when you only plan about seven guys. Charles Pride making both ends of that trip to the line. Came in as a 72% foul shooter, but he gets two much-needed free throws for the Bulldogs. They cut it down to 15, but time's starting to run out here on the road. Saunders runs into some trouble in the backcourt, but is able to pass across to Adams Woods. Here, you know, like I say, Cincinnati's planning on executing offense, continue to make shots, close the game out the correct way. You know, preparing to be able to close out these tight conference games that they'll have here soon in a few weeks. Guama left open from mid-range. That's too strong, but lock in. Lock in. Yeah, the Julius has put a lot of work in over the season. Didn't shoot really well from the three-point line last year. When I've talked to a few coaches, they said he put a lot of time to step in, jump shots, playing off the ball. And, I mean, he's showed this every way of the season. Well, as you said, not only has his shooting been better, but his rhythm shooting that, that is tough to defend when you can create your shot the way he has. That's a big weapon. It has, and the biggest thing to do is get his shot whenever. So as long as it's falling, he can be very dangerous. Kiss off the mark with that jumper. He has 11 points tonight. About 10 under his season average of 21 and a half. Four for 15, but he gets a steal here. Pulls up for a three. Another miss. This has been very quiet this half here, but they've certainly had some battles here the last couple of years and expecting more of the same this season. Oh, yeah. Houston, uh, to be honest, understood when they, when they were forming their program, understanding that Cincinnati at that point was at the top. You know, they got a lot of the same DNA about what you think of a Cincinnati, that toughness, defensive-minded, got guys that are talented, but overall that culture is, is about toughness and That'll be a fun one to watch. Lockett looking for the reverse layup, nearly finished it off, but Elijah's is there for it. He has it stripped away from Lockin, or by Lockin, back on the other end, and it's off of Elijah's, out of bounds. 
Boy, both of those games for Cincinnati, Xavier, and Houston, both coming up before we even celebrate the new year. I know, I, I mean, the year is rolling, Matt. You know, it's scary to say that we almost close to a new year. You know, I feel like the season just started, and the you know, guys are starting to get into some real intense games, which is very fun. It's a double dribble there. I knew that was coming. Adams Woods with a rare second turnover. We mentioned earlier on, he leads the nation in assists to turnovers ratio. That's his second of the night here, but he still has four assists, so that's still a two to one assist to turnovers ratio for him this evening. Uh, he's very consistent with the ball in his hand. And, you know, to be honest, when he started this season, he wasn't actually starting at the point guard. I think he's proven himself over these last eight games he can take care of the ball, make the right decision. <laughs> Top of Elijah's fingertips and out of bounds. Julius coming back in. As Wes Miller wants to, I think, bring his senior leader back on just to kind of steady things here for a, a good finish to this game. Bringing the press here, looking for a senior leader to close this game out correctly, take care of the ball, make sure everybody stays focused. And these are small things when we talk about getting prepared for Xavier here next week. Hey, you're going to see some press. It's going to be a tight game. Why not go ahead and use some game experience to work on some uh, good old endings? Saunders to Locken with the lob. Good adjustment in midair from Victor Locken as he lays it in for two. And up top, Locken steals it away. Showtime as he slams it down with two hands. Oh, this Cincinnati team will play to the end. Locken into double figures with 11. Back the other way, Newman nearly draws another charge. It would have been the third of the game. But he's whistled with a block, just missing into that spot in time. That was a nice little pluck there by locking and wrapping around his back. I mean, Roll might not be able to see it, but at seven feet, that's pretty, that's pretty skilled there, I must say. It's really impressive the skill that he brings to the table at his size. We've talked about his ability to guard so many different positions. I mean, he'll come out, as you saw right there, to half court and can steal it away and take it on his own for the score as Lockin going to come out of the game to a big, big standing ovation. That was foul number five on Newman for a little bit extra delay there, but Lockin has really turned into a fan favorite very early in his Bearcats career. Oh, he is, and I, like I say, I mean, this coaching staff at Cincinnati has spoke very highly on him. You know, as long as his injuries continue to stay at a minimum, he's going to grow. He's going to continue to get better and understand his offense. And I think as, as we see more on the court, we'll get to see more of, of his skill set. And a whistle underneath the back. First one off the bar. And Madsen, you know, when the, the game is on the line, he made some big foul shots one season ago as a freshman. He's known for making them in the clutch situations. He really did. And, you know, when you can shoot the ball like that, a lot of it is just mental. You know, I, I would put him at the free throw line in any close game. He's proven himself to knock him in. 0 for 2 there, but the league is at 17. Mentally, might not be there. I understand that as a player, you know, I used to do some goofy stuff, things like that, but I always tell myself, I can't leave those few points out there. I'll take the opportunity as Hensley is blocked away by Calixt. Impressive block there from the graduate student at Mount Vernon, New York. I mean, Calix gets up. I mean, he shows some really good athleticism here today. I mean, Hensley, six foot eight himself. You got to get up to be able to block him. Well, it's playing the final buzzer. Quick inbound to Aguama as he gets it right back to DeJulius. With a win tonight, Cincinnati would move to 7 and 2 on the season. The losses thus far coming to nationally ranked Arkansas in Monmouth. Pull up jumper from Saunders, Robinson. Bearcats continue to stay aggressive late in this game. They understand we got to learn how to close games out. Do not stop playing to get conservative. And that's what we've seen here. Kiss through pressure. Able to get a basket in one with Oguama going for the block. He's battling through the contact for two. And 
And now Cincinnati can go to the bench. Coming in will be C.J. Anthony and fan favorite Sam Martin coming in for some minutes here late in the game. It's always a beauty to see the Walkins get on. I always speak highly of both walk-ons, man. C.J. Anthony and Sam Martin, they work their tails off. They lift with the team, eat with the team. They're definitely a part of this. It's always, always a good to see them get some floor time. Sam Martin has been such a part of this program, coming back for that extra year that uh, the you know COVID eligibility, if you will, has afforded him. You know, it's funny, if somebody can ask him, he got some good stories about Cincinnati basketball. He's on, literally played for three different coaches since he's been a part of the program. I mean, that's something special there. I know he got some funny, cool stories. He's seen a lot. He's been a part of a lot of wins. It'll be interesting oh, yeah. to see where he ends up when it's all said and done in terms of career wins in this program's history. I will agree. I think he got a couple of uh, conference tournament championships and conference champions. Just can't finish off the three-point play. Just over a minute to go here at fifth third. As Anthony had it stripped away, but is able to get it back. Anthony, long three. Skips high in the air and up over the backboard. I love it. Hey, nothing like a walk-on getting in and wanting to see that ball go through the rim. Take the chance, take the shot. Kiss launches a three. Alex Short. Tips. Here's Anthony coming up through the gears, taking it all the way to the bucket and draws a foul. Well, a chance for two shots at the line. Great take there by CJ Anthony being able to draw the foul right here at the end with scoop lay up there. That was nearly a fancy uh, finish there for a chance at a three. But C.J. Anthony converts at the line, and he's in the scorebook. He got on board. You know, one thing we've noticed all season from Wes Miller, he coaches to the final horn. He does. He does. And, and, and if he expects his team to play to the final horn, you can tell he's, he's with it as well. I mean, he's still analyzing the game. It's 49 seconds to go, and, and he's laser focused over there. Anthony with one more. Rattles in and out as he splits one of two. But he's in the scorebook with a point tonight. Got a 20-second differential shot clock to game clock here for Bryant as the Bulldogs bring in Max Zackheim. That jumper is good from Kiss, and suddenly he has 15 points. Fairly quiet here in the second half. And, uh, you know, Cincinnati Bearcats did a really good job of keeping all eyes on him. And, can't allow 21-point scores come in here and get a rhythm. They did a fantastic job tonight on KISS. Three-second differential, shot clock to game clock here as Bryant will pull that defense back a little bit. Mike Adams-Woods just taking it back to center court. Maybe one more play for Cincinnati. He dribbles through traffic, hangs in the air, shot good, and a foul. Now they're going to call that one. A, that is a, it is a, it's a charge. I think the PA here even thought it was a basket for Adams Woods, but he'll get whistled with a charge there. Three turnovers one. in one night. What does this world come to? He still has more assists than it, though. <laughs> Always on the positive side of those assists to turnovers. It, it happens, and that was a tough one. I'm looking, I, I think there was some feet on the line there, but, you know, tough game. That's why it's just better to pull it out and keep everybody safe. Jeremiah Close Davenport can't believe it either. Yeah, that was a tough call. Well, Max Zakheim, the freshman, heads to the line, shooting two. First shot off the mark for the southpaw. 2.6 seconds to go as Cincinnati is poised to move the 7 and 2 on the season. Zakheim makes the second. He's in the scorebook. Bounds to Anthony, he'll run the clock out. 